Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgamerguru.com. Today I'm working with triangles and gradients in Inkscape version 1.3 to create a crab. I work with the pen tool, the node tool, gradients and a reference image. I start by lowering the opacity of the reference image. I just need it in the background. I lock that layer as well so I'm not accidentally moving it. Then go in with the pen tool and create my initial triangle. I set the stroke color and stroke width to be visible but not overwhelming. I still want to see the design underneath. I duplicate the initial triangle and move just one node. That way the two triangles share one common line and stay connected. I repeat the process and missed one so I gotta fill the second space again. Turning the snapping on makes it easier to connect nodes to existing triangles. I repeat the process duplicating new triangles and moving one node. I try to place the triangles in a way that match the features, color or shading of the reference. And seeing I'll be copying a lot of triangles, I did speed up the video at this stage. It is just a repetition of the same process. Duplicate, move one node and duplicate again. In order to move the nodes of several triangles, I select everything, all my shapes and then go in with the node tool, select an area and move those nodes. That way I can make sure I move all the nodes and don't miss one of the triangles because I haven't selected it. Seeing the crab is rather symmetrical, I duplicate the triangles, mirror them and go in with the node tool and adjust the right side. Sometimes the snapping can be a little awkward, especially when you have a bunch of nodes selected. Rather than fiddle with each triangle separately, you can select multiple triangles select multiple nodes and align them very much like you align objects. With most shapes in place it's time to check and see if I missed a triangle. I remove the stroke and set a fill color. There is one missing. I need to fill that gap. I duplicate the rectangle, move the node, fill that one and there's a slight gap there that I can fill by selecting all the nodes in that corner and snap them to the line. Before I can go into the coloring, I want to move my reference image back up. I create a duplicate, move it to the top, set the opacity back to 100. That way I can see the colors and then go in and select areas of my design and give them a rough base color that matches my reference. I use the color picker and select colors I've already used to maintain some consistency. With the rough colors in place, I start with the gradient tool and use it to add shading and variation to those shapes. 
I try to reuse the same gradient for various parts. This helps me to maintain visual consistency and a manageable amount of gradients used in this scene. Once you set up the start and end point of your gradient, switching from the newly created gradient to an existing one is easy using the gradient drop down menu. You can also select a bunch of shapes, assign a gradient and then adjust the start and end position to create the right shading for those triangles. You can do this with the gradient or the node tool. Once you have a gradient assigned, the start and end points can also be moved via the node tool. Even though this might look like I'm randomly placing my gradients, I am trying to add shading and definition to the crab. It might also seem like an exercise in patience, but it actually was great fun creating this. Overall, it took me roughly an hour to design and shade this crab. It was relaxing to play around with the colors and slowly see the shape evolve. Remember to save and save often. Especially when recording these videos, I tend to forget that. Normally, I work with version numbers for my files. This one is just the version 02. Normally, I probably would be at 6 or 7, just to have files to fall back on if something goes wrong. Rather than just use the save, I use the save as command and give it a new file name by altering the number at the end. SVG files usually are small enough that disk space is not an issue. Time on the other hand, if you lose a complete design due to a corrupt file, is a different issue entirely. I'm still not sure which option is the faster way to do it, assigning a gradient per triangle or assigning a gradient to a bunch of triangles and then fixing each one of them. Play around with it, let me know what you think works best. I am a little spoiled with the gradient tool in Affinity Designer, so I have to admit I did struggle a bit with some of the oddities of the gradient tool like random color changes if I start dragging my gradient from a tile next to the one I'm working on all of a sudden I get that gradient rather than the gradient I assigned. Little things like that made it a little harder to shade this one than the one I did prior in the video for Affinity Designer where I created the face of a dog. Even though there might be areas that could still use a bit of touching up, I will call it quits at this stage and create an additional shape behind my crab to fill in the small lines that show as hairlines between the shapes. They're usually a render issue rather than something that will show in an export. I duplicate the layer, use the layer below and combine all the shapes. I lock the top layer, select the layer below, select everything and use the pass union. This gives me one pass and I can choose a color that matches most of the shades. I just pick the dark red. It hides most of the lines that were visible. It shows some others, maybe an orange will be better, so it's lighter at the top. I can also use the same shape by duplicating it to create a shadow shape to give it additional depth. 
I change the opacity, set the fill to black and there is the shadow. I can now go in and adjust this shape, give it an additional blur, adjust the nodes to match the position of the front legs. You can see the shadow is a little off on the right side, especially the front leg. But overall, this is pretty much done. I created this design using the pen tool for the initial triangle and after that a lot of duplicating, moving nodes with the node tool, adding gradients and of course working off a reference image. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new and maybe give this style a try. I had a lot of fun creating these designs in Affinity Designer as well as in Inkscape. After having done the design in two different tools, it's hard to say which one I prefer. Each one has its strong points. I love the gradient drop down in Inkscape. I prefer the gradient tool in Affinity Designer. So it is much of a muchness. It can be created easily in both tools. When you give this style a try, use a simple reference image to start with. Get a feel for reducing images using just triangles. Simplifying the shapes, adding the color, working with the gradients to add depth and definition. But most of all, have fun with it. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. Click on the notification icon, leave a like and let me know what you want to see in this channel. And I will see you again soon.